Being from Woodstock where the movie was filmed, I'm here to say again, it's Groundhog Day. Not because it's in February, we're through that, but I'm talking about what we're seeing again from those folks who would want to drive business out of Illinois by the establishment of a progressive income tax. We had hearings last week where we were told that Illinois has the highest effective state and local tax rate in the nation. That is true when you, const when you count all property taxes, sales taxes, personal property replacement taxes, excise taxes, and the like. Our flat income tax rate does not contribute to regressivity because it's a flat rate, and a flat rate by definition cannot do so. We were told that Indiana is doing so much better than we are, but you know, Indiana has a flat income tax rate as well. When we look at state tax collections, state and ta local tax collections per capita, Illinois ranks 10th in the United States. And yet what people want to do, those who uh, want to have a progressive income tax want to do, want to increase that. They want us to be higher on the list of personal income taxes. The corporate income tax in this, in this uh, state gives Illinois a rank of fourth in the country in corporate income tax collections. There was a progressive income tax bill that was proposed here in the House this year, House Bill 3522, which and COGFA said that um, we would end up with a $5.2 billion increase to Illinois taxpayers through that income tax, and it would be attributed to 77% of all taxpayers. The Center for Tax and Budget Accountability, not coincidentally, issued a report last week when we were talking about the progressive income tax resolution that wanted to increase the rates along a certain thing. I invite you to read the, um, read the report because it's so full of inaccuracies. I don't have the time to point them all out. But one thing they did not point out was the fact that cost of living in Illinois is so much higher. They didn't, they didn't compare the states based upon um, what, the, what it costs to live in Missouri or Iowa compared to Illinois. We all know that magnets have the ability to attract or repel depending upon what pole is being pointed toward them of another magnet. Positive, um, positive to positive repels, positive to negative attracts. I say that in order to point out a simple fact. California has one of the highest progressive tax rates in the country it has 12% of the nation's population, but it has 34% of the nation's public aid burden. I think what we're looking at with a progressive income tax in California is repelling the ability to pay and attracting those who would take the money that is actually paid in. We were told many times about how much better Minnesota is with its progressive income tax rate that goes as high as 9.65% or something like that. But the thing they, don't, they didn't point out was several things that uh, the Minnesota miracle has that we don't have. Their workers' compensation rates are much less than what we have here in Illinois. Attorneys' fees for compensation claims are capped at $26,000. I would ask the uh, sponsors of the progressive income tax what they intend to do about that. Property taxes in Minnesota average 1% of the, of the um, property value of the house. We know what the property tax bill uh, burden in Illinois is. Their prevailing wage rates are much less than Illinois, about one-third. So unlike Illinois, Minnesota doesn't have the issues that we have with regard to, to, to cost control, which nothing in this resolution seems to want to address. Minnesota pays its K through 12 teachers a lot less than we do, and its higher education budget is considerably less. It also benefits from the, issue, from the uh, nearby Bakken oil um, fields. Minnesota workers are going over to North Dakota and bringing their money home. So what I'm saying is that we have we have the ability to fix our tax problem in this state, but
but a progressive income tax without the kind of substantive and structural reforms that go along with it, workers' comp, prevailing wage, those kinds of things will do nothing but drive out good money. Migration, the migration statistics are irrefutable. Money can travel. If Ken Griffin were to move out of this state, how much of an impact would that have on our budget? There was a gentleman who just moved out of the state of New Jersey to Florida, and the loss of his income to the state of New Jersey amounted to $140 million a year in their budget. If we continue to tax the people who produce in this state, we're going to be driving out income, we're going to be driving out income taxes, and we're going to blow holes in a budget that this state has never seen. I urge everyone to reconsider their support for a progressive income tax. This is not a good idea. We do not need to do this. Our flat tax is sufficient. We need to focus upon the cost of doing business in this state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.